What's up guys, we're here today at Cannes Marine. 800 species here right now. Oh, so much to show you. We work with lots and lots of public aquariums all around the world. They call them a potato grouper. Those are great barracuda. Black blanc tray. Oh, that one's very rare. What's up guys? We're here today in Cairns, Australia with Laura Simmons, Hello. curator of Cairns Marine. Today you guys are going to be seeing their entire facility. You're going to get a tour of basically all of the amazing animals that they deal with every single day. We have an amazing team of people that you're going to get to meet today. We have over 800 different species in our facility and you're going to get to see how it happens and we love showing it off. So Perfect. Yeah, let's right, go. Let's Come it. on in. All right, oh, so much to show you. I'm just gonna start at the start. Yeah, so obviously at Cairns Marine, we specialize in GBR species, but the GBR goes pretty far south. So we also have a temperate room, just in case we bring in temperate species. Right now, we only have a few things in here, but you're welcome to come visit. These are abdominalis seahorses. So they're the big belly seahorses, but they're a temperate species. You need to be able to keep them under 21 degrees. They're very cute, aren't they? So cute. And so these get quite big. Like they get really big when they're full grown. Yeah, so. I bet. Seahorses are pretty special. So cute. Yeah, they really are. So come on out and we'll actually continue our tour because there are lots of animals to see. big animals. As you can see, not only do we love the hobby, but we love public aquariums and we love having people see animals on display. So in this tank, you're seeing the types of animals that you'd see at one of your local. You said that you are from Chicago. Yeah. So Shed Aquarium, we work with them and they're wonderful people and they have beautiful aquarium habitats and they have animals from Cairns Marine. But we work with lots and lots of public aquariums all around the world. So cool. More big animals over here. One of my favorite species of unicorn fish. Yes. Isn't he sweet? So they don't have their uh, horns. Well, out he, yet. he doesn't have one. It's a humphead unicorn. He looks like a beluga whale, oh, doesn't he? he doesn't yeah. Look... He'll never have a spike. He'll just always have a big forehead. Yeah, we like to keep them mixed up. Wow. So much diversity. We really do. We're very fortunate, the, the species that we get to work with on a daily basis. Um, right now, we have lots of projects for public aquariums going on. So our not-so-reef safe butterflies, you'll see loads of beautiful butterflies here. And they've been in quarantine for 30 days. We've had these for a year and a half, only because we try not to put too many into the market at one time. So the Darwin black and white clowns, what we like to call emo nemos. Emo nemos, yeah. <laughs> these are really popular in the aquarium trade. People have been keeping the captive bred versions of these for years and years. Yeah. These black emo nemos, Come from they come from Darwin. They, they come from the Northern Territory. And where they're coming from, and it's an area that's just completely croc infested, because they are the true black and white Darwin clowns. Yeah, those are really black and white. Tell me what else you want to okay. see. Let's, let's There's more. Ahead. All right, yeah, so as we keep moving through the facility, the awesome thing is that we go into bigger animals. So tell us more about the potato cod. Yeah, so potato cods are a bit iconic on our reefs. They're a type of grouper. They call them a potato grouper. Isn't he handsome? He's very cool. He is. Yeah, he's a pretty good little guy. And then, of course, you get assorted fishes. These are our intermediate species, like bigger angels and tangs. These animals go to the public aquariums for their big ocean habitat. We have some that are um, around 5,000 liters. We have others that are 10,000 liters. These ones, though, these two. Uh, uh, this is by around three to 5,000 liters total. So big habitats everywhere, more of our beautiful wrasses. Um, goat fishes? Goatfish? Goatfish, yeah, aren't they gorgeous? Those are uh, called mini bar goatfish. They've got little chopsticks on their face and they use those to feel everything, those little barbels. Look, isn't he cool? He looks like a big rock with a lot of coral his eyes are right here yeah, yeah. on top and that's his mouth. Whoa. I know, isn't he wicked? I think they're beautiful. Reef stonefish, but they're highly venomous. That's what I thought. That's why they're very special. He's on his own. Yep, there you go. They're not tough. No, but we train them to hand feed and they're really, really cool. System one is where you'll see our pajama cardinal fish. This system alone right now is housing maybe 12 different collecting trips. These are our world famous lineatus wrasse. Pretty special species, reef safe. Everybody loves them because look how beautiful they are. Come down here and look at some of our banana wrasses and our antheas like these. 
Pseudanthius lori. They were collected at below 80 meters depth. And then the ones with gold kind of striping are the, um, the Pseudanthius lori. Yeah, but look at these guys. More deep water. This is the Cirrolabris bata phillips. Aren't they incredible, their colors? They're super vibrant, yeah. 80 meters deep. This species, the Pseudanthius ventralis, the ventralis anthias are world famous, probably the most beautiful anthias on the planet. These are collected, again, below 80 to 100 meters in depth. Don't let the tank fool you. These animals are super special. Those are so pretty. They're yeah. unreal. I know, they are. They just, they're iridescent and glowy. Why in my fish stores? What's going on? Um, yeah. <laughs> they're allowed to purchase them. They're allowed to buy them. You have to ask for us by name. If yeah. you say, I want this because I want to work with Pans Marine, then you'll know that you can get welcomed into our world of amazing diversity. We are one of only two collectors in the coral sea in Australia that collect for the aquarium industry, so it's pretty special. We've got, oh, here's square block anthias. Everybody loves a square block. The ultimate in sexual dimorphism. The males and females look totally different. Boys pink with a purple square and the girls are orange. That's about as different as you how, can get. How cool is that? I know. The, the males are the ones with the purple squares? Yep, and the females are the orange ones. We often will keep our animals separated off and containerized because a lot of fish don't play well with others. It's not just because they would, we don't want them to injure other animals. The most important thing is so that they don't feel stressed out all the time. When an animal is really dominant, it actually will be stressed out if it has to be put in a position to always look for territory. So you'll see that's what we've done with our harlequin tusk fish. They're the best tusk fish in the world because they are gorgeous as babies, but they keep that amazing color even through adulthood. What makes it better? They don't just have blue teeth, their bones are blue. Their bones are blue? No joke. Why is that? Do you know? I don't know. So many of them. That's like one collected at one time. This is for the world. <laughs> These are our OTBs. They pretty much glow when you see them. We call them OTBs, but the orange tail blue damsels. Wow, those are super vibrant. And hey, don't forget our filtration. On all of these systems, you'll see that we're running gravel filters, ozone, protein skimmers, and chillers because we want to keep them healthy. I've got six systems here with nothing but inverts and nothing but amazing corals. So we've got animals from as far south as Mackay, all throughout the Great Barrier Reef. These clams were collected in Darwin about a year and a half ago. These are the blue lightning maxima. We've got helios, we've got scallies, we've got you name it. We're so, it's so exciting. iconic stars are in this system. It's a pretty cool one. It's a Leaster leeching rose blotch sea star. You might not have ever seen one of those before. The blue linkias are super popular and they're great cleanup crew. Even in here, talk about babies, um, we breed uh, epaulette sharks here. So these, hold on, let me see where they're hiding. There he goes. Whoa. Yeah, he just hatched out of an egg a couple of weeks ago. All of our seahorses are here. They might have all shipped out. We actually do sell a lot of them. So you've got Hippocampus cuda and Hippocampus reed eye. And these are aquacultures. The cuda are probably the ones that are the most popular because they're not as common in the trade. Have you ever seen this coral before? No. It is a heteropsamia cochlea. We call them knuckle bone corals. They're actually uh, a single polyp, one single animal. So you can see what they look like when they're open, nice and iridescent green. But the reason I wanted to pick it up for you, to see the hole in the bottom? Yeah. There's a commensal worm that lives inside of that hole. Every single one polyp 
has one worm that lives no with it. No way. So not only do they live together in harmony, it moves them. So when you think that corals are sessile or they stay still all the time, that's not true. These guys move around because the little worm comes out and pushes them around and that's how they find their food. That is too cool. And they're knuckle bone corals. That whole side of the facility is all smaller fish, coral, and... Intermediate. Intermediate. Yeah, but out here, this is where we go from intermediate to a bit bigger and then to really big. We are in big animal heaven now. We've got everything from our intermediate, really cool, different odd species to barracuda and jobfish. Right now, you'll see that we've got some food in there and they're nibbling around. But if, if it's early in the morning and they haven't been fed yet, they come right to the window and it looks like fish soup. But now they're a bit chill, you know, they're hanging out, they've had a good feed or two. Most of our vertebrates get feedings like about three to five times a day, depending on the species. Like over here, those are great barracuda. Oh yeah. So, aren't they wicked? This is what you'd consider one of your main predator tank type species. Whoa. They're very curious animals. If you see some of our big stingrays, they'll they'll come to hand feed within days of us yeah, collecting yeah, them. Yeah. And in here, you're going to see one of our specialties, the bluefin trevally. This is a big black blot oh, tray. Is. Isn't he gorgeous? Big boy. Yeah. Yeah, and they're a, quite an interactive species. He'll actually come, and if you were to train him like two days from now, you could get him to just sit in your lap and eat out of your hands. Not all sharks give live births. Some of them lay eggs. But what you see in here are actual eggs from what we call here a zebra or an Australian leopard shark. Uh -huh. And if you look on the bottom of the tank, we actually had one of our first babies hatch. It is, oh, there, there he is. Oh, there he is. He is adorable. Yeah, he is super, super cute. And he will end up being about two and a half meters long. He's so cute. Yeah, he's pretty sweet. Here you go. Come here, boobers. That's what he's going to look like. Now, he's also a juvenile. That little guy's probably only a couple of years old maximum. That's a juvenile? Yeah, that's a juvenile. When they're full grown, see, it's a little male, and he doesn't even have plaspers yet, like, noticeable. And so when he's full grown, he'll be over two meters long, so well over six feet long. So these are Australian nurse sharks. Oh. Yeah. And again, they'll be over three meters long when he, oh, he's just trying to steal the show, isn't he? Always wants attention. Oh, Michael is cleaning a filter sock. There it is. We all love it. You gonna see some more species? These actually are found very far south. These are a very special population. We were almost gifted them because the woman who used to own them all and used to breed them couldn't care for them any longer, so she knew that Cairns Marine would take care of them. So, like all of these, we've had for over 10 years now. There may be barramundi in here too still. Like there's one of our big fatties, and then there's one of the platinum barramundi. Oh, Isn't wow. it insane? Yeah, the white one. Yep, pretty cool. So cool. Yeah, it's a very rare color variant. And you guys have had that one for how long? Oh gosh, I would say we've had this one for about four years. So four or five years? Oh uh, no, no, them. not necessarily. No, they're kind of a collector's item. Got and it. pets. There's a normal barramundi. That's what they normally look like. You're rare. The dark guy. Yes, that one's very rare. And then you got plants. Yes, we even like aquatic plants. We grow everything that we can. We have freshwater tanks. Saltwater tanks, we've got every way, shape, and form. These are just for water. These are all just for water. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and we're testing our water twice a day, every day, for all sorts of parameters, just to make sure it's always healthy. Water quality is king. All right, so let's go in. I know it's getting hot out here. Yes, sir. So come on down. Packing supervisor, 
making schedules and getting things ready to go all around the world, come on upstairs. As we go upstairs, you're gonna get to see the man that is sort of behind everything we've ever done. It's our owner's grandfather, just an amazing man. He's there with a little dugong, but he actually owned the Cairns baths and it converted them into a public aquarium, the very first in far north Queensland to show the world GBR species. So up here we have all of our offices and admin. We've got Ryan and Teresa and Lee. Here's my office and I'm the lucky one because I get a really cool view. map of the GBR. I've got the view. Wow, <laughs> so, you have the best yeah. view in the house. I do. And look what I have. <laughs> Mango seed. Yes. for you. This is the best fruit in the world and I hadn't tried it until I was 22 years old and came to Australia. Here we call it the queen of the fruit because it is the best Ever. It's it like is. play to crack one open for your for your audience someday and show them exactly what it means to eat a mangosteen. It's life changing. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I didn't think there was a fruit that tasted that good, but there yeah, is. Yeah, no, there is. This is my pet frog Fergus. You want to visit him? He's a magnificent tree frog. Oh wow! Isn't he's he cute? He is. He is magnificent. He's the best little frog on the planet. His name is Fergus the frog. Fergalicious. <laughs> yeah. Fergalicious. Yeah. He is Fergalicious. Why is there a giant? Ah, oh, again, this also belongs in my office. This is Dolly. You saw the picture of her with Vico. Um, he was an amazing man, and he actually practiced with taxidermy and did molds of animals. And when Dolly passed away, very sadly in the 70s, he chose to make sure that he made a mold of her. So this is Dolly the dugong. So this is just a mold? This is a mold. Okay, <laughs> all right. But this is how big know. she was. This is our cute little Dolly. Wow. Yeah, and so you can see she, she actually normally should be hanging from one of our ceilings because she's really cool and she's a dugong. And then as we come in here, hold on. Da, 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 da. Oh, new people. It's not the same. This is Christy and Stuart. This is where all the magic happens to actually move animals from this building all around the world. And he's really good at it and she's really good at it. Oh, and this is James. James works. He is our spectacular domestic sales guru and packing extraordinaire. He does it all. What don't you do? Sleep. What do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys. Oh, hey, an incubator. Guess what? We also love turtles. Freshwater Australian turtles. And this incubator, when it's full, is usually full of little baby sea turtle eggs. They're pretty amazing. What's going on right there? I see a pink. Right. Oh, um, his name is. Bacardi, he's a gala, he's a type of cockatoo. Bacardi, come here. Is it come Cardi, here. like Cardi B or Bacardi? No, Bacardi, like the rum. <laughs> yes, uh, our owner's favorite drink is a Bacardi, so he has Bacardi the bird. Oh. And Bacardi's a bit, he's he's Lyle's pet, but he's also a house bird. Ken's so Marine has a house bird. Hi, Bacardi. Are you a good boy, you want some attention, don't you? Hello. What are you gonna do? He's gonna lift his leg up. No, I see what, oh, I see what you want, no. No, I said no. Does he bite? He said, um, not at first, but yes, eventually he'll always bite you. Especially when he wants your attention. He's a great bird, though. We do love him. Yeah, you're going to like and subscribe, call Fish 12G. You he's, that? he's trying to tell you, yes. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Cheers. Uh, Perfect. Can's best, the freshest, most beautiful water in the world. Water review. Yeah. Water review. Yeah. Yeah. It's solid. All right, guys, I just want to thank Laura and the entire team here at Cannes Marine for allowing us to showcase what they do. It's amazing to see that people like these guys care so much about the well-being of the animals and are really doing it in a responsible way that makes sure that the animals are taken care of as best as possible. So I want to know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more upcoming videos. We'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.